Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and many of you are wondering how to take your honey off for the first time, or maybe second, third time. I know we didn't start using this method initially, and there's several ways to do it. I mean, it's just like everything else in beekeeping. There's multiple ways to achieve the same goal. I like using a fume board because, it, one, I think it clears the supers very well, and also I think it's pretty cost effective and, and pretty quick. Now, we've got a really inexpensive fume board over here. I went away from using telescoping covers several years ago, mm -hmm. but I have several of them lying around. I just got some felt. It's best if the, your felt pieces go all the way to the edges, um, but this will work as well. Uh, there's several types of fume uh, material out there. Honey Bandit is what I found that I like. One, because it doesn't smell all that bad. Um, actually, in small doses, I think it smells pretty pleasant. Um, but let me tell you, if you have 10 of these fume boards in the back of your vehicle after you've got done pulling honey and it's in an enclosed space, even with the windows <laughs> rolled down, it's, it's pretty strong. But it, it's, it's really not that bad. And basically, we're just pushing the bees down as you're fixing to see. So we're going to apply a little bit to this felt over here. And a lot of it depends on the, the temperature. It's been about 100 degrees or so. I might need to apply a little bit more, probably because it's cooled down. Had a storm front come in, cool things down just a little bit. So now what we're going to do, I left my veil at the house. Thankfully, I brought my bee suit or I'd be in trouble. Look at the front of these hives right here. This is what honey production hives look like. Now, they can be a little bit taller than this. Our honey flow wasn't that great this year. You can see behind me, all of these colonies, they've had their honey supers pulled. And so now, um, they're pretty short doubles. I think there might be a triple in there somewhere. Yeah, I think I got one triple in there, but most of those have been pulled from. And these down here have not. I think maybe one super was pulled or so. So we're just going to rush, push those bees down with the smoke. That looks nice. But there's not a whole lot of bees up here because it's so hot and humid. There's only eight frames in this box. And all the, it's because all the bees are out on the high, which actually is going to make this a little bit easier. Now, if you'll notice at going to the front of the hives, how little activity is going on. This is a dearth period. There's like no nectar. Very, very little pollen happening right now. Let's get this fume board on. And because of that, the bees can be more irritable. Or if you take too much honey, they'll starve. Some beekeepers take all the honey and then feed back syrup. And um, that's, we're not taking all of it. There's a certain amount that we leave. On some of them, they'll have enough. We won't have to feed it all in the summer. Some of them, they'll need a little bit. We're, take, we're a little bit more aggressive in what we're taking this year because we have a bottom line to maintain and the syrup will work just fine keeping the bees healthy. Some people disagree with that. Syrup actually can help quite a bit um, and help and keep the bees going forward. And we have a fall flow to look forward to, so hopefully the fall flow is going to take care of everything the bees need. So right now I can hear the bees roaring a little bit. You're supposed to offset this a little bit. Um, so that's what they tell you to do and go like so. However, since my felt is not all the way around, I typically don't, and I just don't leave it on very long. Just push those bees down. I typically wear gloves pulling supers because as many as we pull, pulled at a time, you end up grabbing a bee, bee eventually. Well, that bee is not my buddy today. All right, so that hasn't been very long, has it? That looks pretty clear to me. Let's see how many honey supers we have on this hive. Come on now. That's nice and full. Set that down. Looks like this one's pretty cleared also. It helps when there's not a ton of bees up and they're working all out trying to stay cool on the front porch there's a little bit more bees in this one than I would like there's still not very many 
Yeah, there, this fume board needs to go down. But keep in mind, you can run multiple fume boards, especially if you have a, a beekeeping wife like I do, and you have an unfair advantage. <laughs> then um, when she's not holding the camera, she can be um, putting fume boards on the colonies and popping supers off also. So between the two of us, we can run multiple fume boards. And it goes by pretty quickly. Just wait till the kids get older and we get some payback for all those grocery bills and diapers and get them to do it. And I'll hold the camera. Nah. <laughs> I'll let Laura hold the camera. I can't do a very good job at that. Alrighty. I seem to have pushed them down pretty well. This one's a deep super. It looks like we got a frame that's burred up down here. Multiple frames. Got some weight. Now the trick is, this is where I need my bee gloves. I got bees all over the front of this box up here. Hmm. Tedious. We'll probably leave this. I'm just curious to see what we have. I'm seeing some brood up in here, which is interesting because I have an excluder below this. So we got a frame that's mostly honey over here. But over here, I'm seeing drone brood in the top, and I reduced this down a long time ago. Look at that right there. Wow. So either one, she's come through the excluder, or what I have seen happen in the past is that a they'll supersede, and the virgin queen will go out, go on her mating flight, and she'll come back, and she's still a little bit slimmer, and she'll come through. But some, I've had some queens that just go through excluders. It's very rare, but I had one last year. I had a lot of excluders on. I had one queen last year that I mean to tell you, I tried multiple excluders and she was still slipping through them. Same queen, same March queen, and uh, she just looked at that excluder and like, I can fit right through that, buddy. So she did, and you just never know what you're going to get. It was a perfectly good excluder. I used a brand new one. So what we've got right here, I think is three deeps worth, but, uh, three deeps, three boxes worth. But now, since I have a queen up in there, I'm going to have to go through these frames over here and see. She might, goodness, she might be up in there. Now, that fume board might have pushed her down. And, you know, looks like they've got honey here. Brood I see here. Probably a little brood over here. Honey, honey, honey. And so a little feed would be helpful. I'm seeing a reluctance of bees to leave these frames over here. So I'm wondering if... There's some brood over here or something. That's solid honey right there. You know, that's solid honey right there, which just breaks my heart. Nice. We got two old shallows at the bottom. It looks like one deep box of honey right here. This frame doesn't fill all the way full. Just Yeah, it's a little light on this one side. The other frame looks completely full. A little bit of bee bread down in there as well. You can see that where it's kind of, some of these are capped or have a honey layer. And then you're going to see um, some bee bread down in there. That's, that's so vital to the bees. It's, uh, it's, it's more important right now for us beekeepers and, and for the bees than the honey is for sure. Some people think honey is the best thing, but I would... Boy, if I had a choice between 100 pounds of, of nectar coming in right now or all the pollen, healthy pollens that the bees could have for the next good bit, I would totally go for the pollens in a heartbeat. It's easy to keep the colonies big and healthy and strong and make splits with good pollens, but uh, nectar, just energy basically. It's kind of like a honey sandwich, you know, it's, uh, it's sweet, 
give you a lot of energy really fast, but it's just not going to sustain you for the long haul. And I like those proteins and fats. So anyways, um, there's your fume board right there. I mean, really, it's pretty simple. You saw how much, how little product I used on it. And this is not the best fume board in the world. Keep in mind, though, if it's hotter than this, the sun's beating on that metal, um, it's going to evaporate a little bit faster. But this works really well for us. You can run multiple ones at a time. You can make your own fume boards. Very cheap. This stuff goes a pretty long ways, and it's Honey Bandit again. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what this colony produced considering the year that we had. So, anyways, I got to get to putting some cover on this because you can see already bees are starting to rob this box. Hope you guys are having a good week. Uh, we'll see you later, and uh, hope you have a good honey harvest.